All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Young Learning. We are going to learn about our Unit 1 review for uh, Imagine Learning. Uh, this is our version B. Uh, we were talking about one variable statistics. Um, so we're just going to get straight to it and talk about variability uh, and center. So our main objectives here are to find out what our four main components are. We have two types of centers that we're going to figure out, and then we're going to have two types of variabilities. Uh, our centers are usually the mean and the median. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Our centers are usually, we have our centers are usually the mean and the median. Okay, and then our variability, and then our variability here is usually going to be the standard deviation, or SD in our case, so shorthand, and the other one is IQR, so the interquartile range, okay? So that's what we're going to look at. That's what we're going to see, try and figure out all that stuff and everything like that. So let's get started with problem one. Problem one states that the two box plots summarize the number of hot dogs eaten at a fourth grade hot dog eating contest for two different homerooms. Which of the statements must be true about the distribution data represented? And it states here, statements, which means that it could be multiple statements, more than one could be right or it could be one that's right or it could be all that's right so we're going to take a look at the our solutions right here so the answer is for number one is competitors in a class a typically ate more hot dogs than b so if we take a look uh biggest thing for a box plot is if you take a look this is our notes right here our notes our notes state that a box plot does not tell me does not tell me the amount oops forgot the name does not tell me the amount Okay, so here's the biggest problem is that the box plot does not tell me how much someone has eaten. It just tells me the fourth grade has eaten these amounts, but it doesn't tell me how many amounts. So we know for a fact that A is wrong. We can't, we can't tell who is going to have more, uh, more hot dogs or not. Which means that also, problem two down here on D, the total number of hot dogs eaten in the class um, are greater total. So that means we know that A and D are incorrect. So A and D is wrong. Alrighty, so we're 50%. We have 50-50 chance of getting these right, these two right here. The middle half of the data of class A is more variability than the middle class middle half of data which is true so a has a bigger variability remember variability is how far they are from the middle so a has a bigger variability and then over here down here variability is very tiny they're very close together so we know that this one is correct so b can be correct let's take a look at c we do have to like look at all of them because of the fact that uh more than one's right the median number of hot dogs eaten by a is less than the median of b that's correct but the key word is and and means that both both statements have to be right the interquartile range for both classes are equal well we know for a fact that's not true because over here the interquartile here is two q1 is two and q3 is 12 so our iqr well, for the first one is about 10. However, here it's 9 and 12, which means that the IQR for this bad boy is about 3. So we know that this second part is incorrect, which means that our only answer that's correct is B. So 
there you have it. We're looking at center, the median, and the interquartile range. Box plot does not tell us how much each one has done. So the amount, the total number, we don't know. So let's take a look at two. So two is a dot plot. Here we do know 20 quizzes. There are 20 quizzes total here on our scale and everything like that. So, so another hint, another note is talking about variability, correct? Variability. Ability is all about the spread. It's all about the spread. The spread, how far things are apart. So let's take a look at our let's take a look at our two charts. We have Noah, we have Noah, and we have Jada. So Noah here has a spread of this. And then Jada has a distribution of this. They're both bell curves. So that's good. Uh, we can look at Jada's, make it easy. Jada's mean average, we're estimating here. We don't have to calculate most of this. Our mean is probably somewhere around the middle. Because if we go, our cluster of means is this. So our mean is about 85. Luckily for us... Luckily for us, the mean here, is, the median here, is also. If I can actually write, our median is also eighty-five, because if we look, if we look, we have one, one, two, two, and then if we keep going all the way across, these four, and these four. Eventually, you'll get to the middle, which is about 85. So our median is about the 85. So our mean and median for Jada is about the same. Here in this case, our mean's a little different. Our mean is going to be a little different. Our mean's probably going to be the average of this. So the average is probably over here. Uh, if we look, our median's probably going to be around 85, depending on what it is. So let's take a look. We have one here, one here. Four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, and one. So it looks like between 85 and 89, we know that the median, we're doing the median before we do the mean because the median was easier. The median is going to be somewhere between 85 and 90. So that's about what? 87 and a half? 87.5. The mean, however, will probably be somewhere around there. Because as you can see, we have a full load on this half and a full load on this half. So the probably the average between 75 and 100 will probably be also around 87. Now again, we're not going to try and s. Oh, we're not going to try and get accurate. We're just going to have an estimation about it. So we got the mean and the median here, uh, both of them. So now let's take a look at what we're going to see here. Noah scores have greater variability than Jada. So variability means how far they're spread apart from the middle. As you can see, this they have the same distribution, but there's one thing that's different, which is what this seventy. The 70 is the only thing that's different between the two, 75 and 100, and 75 to 70. Because Jada has this, this little one, our spread is a little bit bigger, which means that our score here is that Jada has a bigger variability. So Jada, score, Jada has a higher variability here based off of because it's about 5. As it's about five points more than Noah. We know that much at least. And so that's why we know that A is going to be incorrect here. Standard deviation of Noah's score is equal to the standard deviation of Jada score. We just said no because the standard deviation is variability uh, because of that. So these two tie in together. That is incorrect. 
we know it's about five points. Okay. The mean of Noah's score is greater than the mean of Jada's score. We just did that. The mean is higher, so we know that this is correct. So, yes. So, we're going to circle C. Noah's score is better than Jada's score in every answer. Unfortunately, this doesn't tell me order. Does not give me order here. So, you have to know, put a note that, our, that distributions does not mean order. Okay, um, nothing here, none of the graphs gives us order. We don't know what went first, we don't know what went second, what went last, or anything like that. So, it does not, does not give us order, which means that you uh, does that Noah could have started with the 75 and then Jada could have gotten the 100. And then the next one could have been Noah got a 90 and Jada got 75. We don't know the order of everything, so we definitely know that's wrong. And then using only Noah's score, the mean is equal to the median. So only using Noah's score, the mean, if we look, it's about the same. Give or take, mean and median's about the same. So we were gonna, we were close. About 75, we were thinking about it. Yeah, it's fairly close, so we are going to take that. So our two answers here is C and E. Remember, best answer works here. This is also maybe. It's about there, 75.5. If we actually really calculated, it would have done that. Next one. Next one, number three. Number three is we are looking at another dot plot. The dot plot shows the height of two breeds of sunflowers. Okay. Just remember, variability is this, how far they are spread apart. So if we take a look, let's start at order. Let's find the mean and medians here. The mean and median here are about the same. So the mean is about 8. The median over here is also about 8. Okay. Down here, the mean and median is about the same as well. So let us put that on here. So there we go. The mean and median is about the same, which is great for us. Okay, now we're looking at variability. Which one has the more variability that's spread out more? And in this case, B has more of a spread. So we know this one has the higher variability. Okay, so our variability here is higher. Okay. So then let's go through some of these answers, okay? The mean and median heights shown in the dot plot for sunflowers B are the same. Yes, we looked at it. That is correct. So we are going to circle that right there. Nice big circle on that. The standard deviation of heights shown in the dot plot for B is greater than the standard deviation of A. So B has a bigger variability. We just established that, so that's a yes. The median values of height shown in the dot plot for two sunflowers are about the same. Mean value. We know that the both means are the same. That means yes, we can circle that. And then the median value, the medi median value of heights of the sunflowers remain unchanged after 10 foot flowers is cut down and removed from the data set. So we're going to remove the 10 and see what happens. We talked about this. Uh, before I answer D, we're going to talk about D and E at the same time because they both are the same thing. The new sunflower with the height of 13 will affect the mean value of heights of the sunflower B more than the median value of the heights of sunflower B. So we're going to talk about both of these. Okay, Both of these at the same time and then we will, we will adjust accordingly. So your note here. We are going to create a note here, okay? So the note is whenever, when you add or remove, when you add or remove any data, so if you add or remove data, if you add or remove data majority of the time, Majority, I'm not saying it will always be like that. Majority, majority of the time, uh, 
Majority of the time, it will it will affect the mean and standard deviation. Okay. The median. The median and IQRs, oops, that is not how we write IQR, IQR stay the same. Okay, so just that note, with that note involved, we're looking at D. If you take 10, it says it's going to affect, it's going to, it will make it unchanged, it will not affect the median which we just said so that means yes that is correct we are going to circle that and then if you do 13 it says it's going to affect the mean but not the median so yes that's correct so in this case all three all five of these questions are correct all right so that's good that's good for us um, these are the these are the explanations for each one Moving right along to this, we have a majority of histogram plot. Now we have a histogram plot. Our histogram plot is going to show us what we need to do. So a school has a toy drive for the holidays in which students bring in toys to donate charity. The number of, the number of toys donated by 7th and 8th graders to summarize here and here. Looks like our median and means are about the middle. Median and means are the same. It's about... Here it's about 6 and 6. So our mean and median is the same. But we are looking at standard deviation. Standard deviation states that we are looking at the spread. Which one is more, which one has more points farther away from the mean and median? In this case, the mean and median is about 6 and 6. So which one has more points farther away from 6? Is it? eighth graders or seventh graders and if you take a look we have a lot of dots on the away from the six so this one should have more variability and this one they're all clumped together which means that this one has smaller variability it's more consistent so in this case the answer is seventh grade seventh grade has more standard deviation because they're farther apart okay now, we're going to take a look at this one. I'm going to have to make my points a little small, my line a little smaller because we're going to have to make a box plot. It's asking us to do a box plot. First things first is, is it in order? Step one. So step one is, is it in order? It is. Check. We're good on that. It's in order. We're going to take a look. Now we're going to find the median. The median in here is, we are going to take a look. We have five. 25, 7, and then we're going to go down the line until we find where the middle is. And usually in this case, if it's odd, we know the number is there. If it's even, we'll have to find the midpoint. And in this case, we don't have to because it's odd. So 10 is our median. <laughs> Box plots is always medians and IRQs. Okay. So be careful of that. So we have our median here. Now to find Q1, we take everything on the other side of this 10, not including that. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 7. We know the answer is going to be in one of these. And in this case, we skip, we cross out the ones on the outside until we find the middle. And in this case, our Q1 is going to be 8. Q1 is going to be 8. Over here, we're doing the same thing, right side of, of the median. And then we cancel it out here, 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 here. So our Q3, our Q3 is going to be 16. Now this is our max and mins. And then our minimums over here. Okay, so then we can draw our box plot. All right, our box plot is very simple. Uh, let's see. I've never used, I've never used shapes before, but we know that our Q1's at eight, and then we go all the way to Q3, which is about sixteen. So here's our box plot right there. Nice little box plot. It's beautiful. 
uh, we're gonna have our line we're gonna have 25 so we know 25 is right here we're gonna have a nice little line here our minimum is 5 so we're gonna have 5 here Ooh, that was terrible Yeah, close enough. It's a little off, but I'll live with that. Uh, we know our median. Our median's at 10, so we're going to do 10 here. Our 10. And then we're going to draw our little whiskers. So we're gonna draw. There we go. And there's our box plot. Okay, box plot. Median, Q1, Q2, Q1, Q3, max and min, max and min. So there we go. Here's what we have. So now we're going to look at this. What measures the center? So center. Center means that it's either going to be mean. Oh, my gosh. We're not on lines anymore. Whoop, whoop. Got to do that. So center means it's either mean or median. Okay, this is to have the data distribution, explain your reasoning. This is the mean because it's based on how it's skewed, uh, because it's also a box plot. So in this in this center, because it's skewed, we have a skew. We have a skew. We know that we are looking at the median because of a box plot. We also know we have to use the median because it's not symmetric. So we're using the median. The median because, and you have to write in complete sentences, this is what we've been practicing on, because of the skew, right? Of the distribution. Okay. It is skewed right based off of the dis based off of the distribution. Okay, skewed right. What does it mean to be skewed right? Skewed right means all the little points. Think the the minimum amount of points, very little points, are on the right side. Skewed left means that there are more point less points on the left. Less points on less points on the right is skewed right. Less points on the left is skewed left. So remember that. Okay. Then what measure is appropriate for describing the variability? In this case, it doesn't say explain. See, the key word here, the key word is explain your reasoning. That's why we have to write in incomplete sentences. Here we don't. One word answer. What is appropriate for variability if we're using the mean? Okay. If we're using the mean, then that means over here we are, what is associated with the mean? It is the IRQ. So always IRQ. Okay. Or is it IRQ? Did I make a mistake? I did, because why? I am dyslexic. It is the IQR. There we go. All right. Okay, so that is number five. Two more questions. We have six and seven. Six, six. we need to build our histogram. Okay, we need to finish the histogram. That's the biggest thing. Complete the histogram with the remaining uh, bowling scores. We have all these bowling scores. So we need to figure out which bowling scores actually work. Okay. Which of the bowling scores is the correct answer on these? And we have to count. These are the counting points of everything over here. So on the left, uh, up and down. Up and down is our range. Okay, so our range is includes the first. We always go include the first, but not the second. Okay, include the first number. Okay, but not the second number. Okay, do not do the second number. So if it's 120 to over here, it's 130. Then we include everything from 120. To 129. 130 does not count. 130 counts for the next box. Okay. So up here, this is how many. Your this right here is how many numbers are included in that. How many of those numbers are there? Okay, how many numbers are there? 
Um, in this case, this one says uh, numbers between 120 to 129. There's 13 of those numbers. See that? 13. I don't know how many there are. There's just 13 of those numbers between 120 and 129. So we're going to count these. We know that these are by tens. We just talked, we just found that out. This is between 120 to 130, 130 to 140. So we know for a fact that this is going to be 60 to 50. Oop, not 50. 60 to 70. Yeah. 60 to 70. 70 to 90. 90 to 100. So let's see how many are between 60 to 69 without hitting 70. In this case, it's only one. So there's only one number that is between 60 and 69. So we know we have a histogram plot that goes like this at one. Okay. Ooh. How about we do it in blue? How about we do it in the same color, huh? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it in the same color. I like that. Oh, matching. I like it. There we go. All right. So between 1, we, between 60 and 69, there's one of them. So now we go to the next one. Between one, 225, so we want 220. 220, which is right here. And then we move on to the next one between 220 and 230. So 220 to 230, how many numbers are going to be on there? And in this case, there's going to be only one because we don't include 230. So between 220 and 220 and 230, we have about one again. And then from 230 to 240, we have this. So it looks like we have three. We have three numbers. We have three numbers between 230 230 to 239 so let's go over here so three is like right here so it's about here okay there we go and then between 240 to 250 240 to 50 there's only one so we're going to do that again there's only one right here and then 250 to 260, nothing. And then we go up to 280. So 280 to 290. 280 to 290, there's only two. And then 290 on, 290 on is also two. So there you go. So there's two right here. There's two right there. Draw this straight down. Draw this straight down. And there we go. We just uh, we just completed the histogram plot. You'll probably need a ruler, stuff like that, so forth. Use this now for part B. Use the shape of distribution to compare the mean and median. Are the mean and medians equal? If not, which is greater? As you can see, there's a skew. We know this is a skew to the right. We know this is, has a skew to the right. This is a skew to the right because very little points are on the right. Most of your points are over here. So that means if we do that, if we have a skew to the right, that means our median is somewhere in here. Our median is going to be somewhere in this area right here. So our median should be right here where the median is. Okay. Our mean, however, because of the skew to the right, pushes our mean up if you have a better score that means your average goes higher if you have a really bad score down here if you have a smaller score then it pushes the median the mean to the left so because you have a lot of little you have this 300 here it's going to push that mean over to this side so i think our mean i think our mean is going to be somewhere over here Okay, now you can explain that down here. You can explain that down here now, saying that no, they are not equal. Not equal. Because of 
the skew to the right. If you skew to the right, that means the mean is going to be moved to the right more. Which makes the mean move to the right. Okay? So that's why. This, if there was no skew, then your mean and median would have been in the middle. If it's symmetric, your mean and the me mean and the median will be in the middle. Will be fairly close. It would be the same. But because of the skew, your mean's going to move away, away from the median and get closer to the skew because of how the skews work. Great. Last one. This is probably the longest one. It's two pages because the question is on one page, the, the information is on one page, and the question is on another page. So let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at our graphs and find out what we have. We have two uh, parts of Antarctica and their yearly and their uh, warmest times in the temperatures. Okay, During the warmest time of the year, we're going to do daily temperatures of two parts of our, our Antarctica. Okay, So part A, we have a fairly consistent, they're both fairly consistent, but... Um, a has more of a uniform, and then B has more of a bell curve, okay? Fairly consistent, so our mean and medians will probably be fairly close together. They'll probably be the same, so keep an eye on that. Uh, they are, as you can see, the mean, the mean and medians are fairly close, a little bit off, but yes, they're fairly close as what we proved. Standard deviation is what, basically which one has a bigger spread. In this case, we know that the spread the the spread of A is more, so B is more consistent. So we're gonna star these. Can I actually do shapes? Is there a shape? Uh, let's do triangles. Let's do triangles. So we look at this. Which one's bigger? Negative. Negative numbers. Negative numbers means they're opposite. The bigger the negative, the smaller the number gets. So you gotta remember. So in this case, A is gonna be bigger. A, is, A has the bigger mean. Ooh, do I want that color? Do I want that color? I don't want that color. I want this color. Let's do green. Uh, let's do pink. I like pink. Uh, okay. So, as you can see, the mean is bigger. A has a bigger mean. A has a bigger median. Okay. Uh, A has a bigger standard deviation, which means that... That B is more consistent, okay? B is more consistent. Uh, the minimums, B is a bigger minimum. B has a bigger minimum. B also has a bigger interquartile range, Q3. Um, a has the bigger interquartile, uh, has a bigger Q3, and the maxes are the same. Okay, so now we have all this information. Let's take a look at these answer. Let's take a look at these questions so we can answer them. Number one, using the shape of the distribution to s select the appropriate measures of center and variability for the daily temperatures of each of the two locations. Compare the daily temperature for the location using uh, using these measures. Explain which value means means in your location. Now, here's the biggest thing. You have to explain each location, okay? So you're going to have to tell me what's happening. There are three parts to this question that you have to answer. First of all is use the shape distribution to select the appropriate center and variability. So we're going to answer this one. No, that's not what I want anymore. Let's go back to pen, okay? So we're going to look for the center and the variability. In this case, because of their symmetry, they're symmetric, fairly symmetric, except for this one. This one kind of dipped down, but it's fairly symmetric. Because of its symmetry, we talked about this in class, and we're going to write the note down. Since, and we're going to write it out, since the distributions, and we have to write in complete sentences, since the distribution of both, are symmetric the 
symmetric, we are using, we are going to be using the mean and standard deviation. Okay, and standard deviation. And then we have to do this part, the next part, compare the daily temperatures in each location using these measures. Explain what each value means. So, we know in location A, location A has, location A has a higher mean and higher medium and a higher de deviation compared to location B, which has a higher which has a higher minimum and max and interquartile one so the location location a has a higher mean has a higher mean okay And higher, oops, can't spell higher, standard deviation. Which means that, which means that location A gets colder more often. But location B has more consistency. Okay, as you can see, there's a lot to write. Okay, we are writing in complete sentences, and that's what we have to figure out. Okay, since the distribution of both are symmetric, we are using the mean and the standard deviation. Location A has a higher mean and a higher uh, standard deviation, which means that location A is colder more often, but location B has more consistency. The numbers, the, it's, the weather is consistent more in location B. Okay. Part B, there are, is a malfunction with the thermometer in which in each location which left out the readings from last day. Location A is negative 25, and location B is negative 1. Are both of these data values outliers? Explain how. So we have a formula. There is a formula for this. There is a formula for this, okay? Formula, okay? For the minimum, for the minimum, it is Q1 minus... 1.5 times the IQR. Okay. For the maximum, this what's determined is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. This will determine if our if our numbers 25 and negative 1 are going to be in the range or outside of it. So we do have to do some some calculations. So here's location A. Location A is going to be a minimum because location A is negative 25, so that's a minimum. Remember, smaller negative means it's a smaller number. So we are going to use the minimum here, which is equal to what is our Q1? So we got to look. Q1 for location A is negative 19. Negative 19 minus 1.5 times, what is my IQR? The IQR in this case is about, here to here, it's about 5 point, about 5.3. Right here, Q1 minus Q, Q3 minus Q1. So it's about 5.3. 5.3. And that gives us about negative 24.48, which is outside the threshold of negative 25. 
So yes, this is, yes, 25 is an outlier. So let's look at location B now. Location B is a max because it's a higher number, okay? So this is going to be, we're going to look at Q3 for location B. Q3 is negative 12.9. Negative 12.9 plus 1.5 times, and then what is my IQR? And if I calculate that, my IQR between here and here is about 2.73. And that gives us about negative 8.81. And 8.81 is out is one negative one is outside negative 8.81. So yes, this is also this is also an outlier. So both of these are outliers. Perfect. And that's how we determine if they're an outlier or not. If it's a minimum, you take this formula. If it's a maximum, you take this formula right here. All right. Next one. Jackson suggests suggests is not using these recent discovered values from Part B because they are unusual. Is this the correct action to take? Explain your answer. Um, there is no right or wrong answer. It's just what your reasoning is, is the case may be, okay? So if you chose to do the first case, which is yes, we're going to throw them out. Um, if you want to keep them, if you want to keep the data, you would have to explain to me why it would be. It could have been global warming, okay? Could be global warming. Could be some other case. It could be it could be some kind of weather phenomenon. Could be a storm. Could be a storm, etc. Then we would have to keep the data because it's a natural occurrence and everything like that. We would have to keep the data to see what would happen, natural occurrences and stuff like that. Um, two. Uh, if you want to remove it, if you want to remove the data, then that means that you would have to explain something. Could be an animal sitting on animal sitting on the. Ooh, that's how you spell animal. Could be an animal sitting on your thermometer. Could be an animal. Could be something that doesn't necessarily, or it could be something that's not weather related. Okay, you just have to explain it. Give me, give me a reason why you would keep it. Give me a reason why you would to remove it. Okay, so this is very subjective. If you did anything, you'd probably get the point. But you have to do it in complete sentences and so forth. Last but not least, okay. Last but not least, if the data from Part B is to be included, which would be more likely to change significantly? We've done this three times. Okay, we've done this in uh, the previous problems already we did it in uh, problem five okay we did it in problem five where it, it's asking us which one would be which one would move we've also did it in problem three b and e okay which one which one is likely to change explain your reasoning okay so in this case, if we do include those numbers, those numbers, oh my gosh, where am I going with this pen? This pen, this pen's going haywire. The mean and standard deviations would be affected. Okay. Because, and we would give a reasoning because of how the distributions work. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our review. So hopefully you understand the review. We do have a we do have an exam. Uh, we do have a test coming up. Uh, this will help you review for it, keep studying, and stuff like that. I believe you guys will make it happen and everything like that. So 
on that note, that is another episode of Young Learning. I will see you later. All right. Bye-bye.